welcome to the second lecture of uh, sixth week. In the last uh, uh, module, we derived the wavy equation by looking at a small segment of a string. So, it is called wavy equation because uh, it describes how a wave propagates in a string. And we also saw that um, it also tells us a way to obtain velocity of the wave that is generated uh, in a string. So, in this particular case, we were actually looking at what would be called transverse wave simply because each small segment of the string is simply executing simple harmonic oscillation, up and down oscillation, whereas the disturbance as a whole travels in a direction that is perpendicular to this oscillation. So, it is called the transverse uh, wave. So, in today's uh, lecture, uh, let us look at this idea of wave velocity a little more closely. Simply because there are two actually three possible velocities that you can identify at least for the present purposes let us look at two different uh, possible velocities that we can identify. So, one as I said if I look at a specific small segment of a string it is simply executing up and down motion simple harmonic motion. So, there is some velocity that is associated with this up and down motion. So, that is one possible velocity and we also we are arguing that a disturbance that we create at one place propagates through the string. So, in this string is a medium or you could imagine that string itself is the medium through which the disturbance propagates and there is a velocity associated with the speed with which the disturbance propagates. So, that is another velocity and there is no reason that these two velocities should be the same. To begin with, let us write down one possible solution of the wave equation. So, this solution that I have chosen corresponds to a wave that is travelling in the positive x direction. So, one possible uh, velocity that I can define uh, which would be called the particle velocity is dou y by dou t. Uh, if I differentiate this with respect to time, I would get uh, A omega into cos omega t minus k x. This as you can see is defined as the displacement or rate of change of displacement as a function of time. So, this is essentially telling me the velocity of a small segment of string that is simply executing up and down simple harmonic oscillation. And let me now in anticipation of what is going to come uh, also define dou y by dou x which is the gradient in this context. So, this is telling me how the displacement is changing as a function of position along the string. The other velocity is of course, the wave uh, velocity or phase velocity uh, that would of course, be defined as uh, dou x by uh, dou t. So, that is how fast the disturbance is uh, travelling. Now, we can relate uh, these three quantities. So, I can write dou y by dou t as um, dou y by dou x multiplied by dou x by dou t and I can now substitute the known uh, values. So, dou y by dou t is of course, my particle uh, velocity and this phase velocity which we shall call as c 
we had used the notation c in the last lecture that would be omega by k. Okay. So, now let me put uh, all those together. So, dou i by uh, dou x um, would be equal to minus a k into cos omega t minus k x multiplied to dou x by dou t which is omega by k and dou y by dou t we had already calculated that earlier on that is a omega cos omega t minus k x. So, you will notice that there is a problem of sign here, there is an overall an additional minus sign that has crept into this uh, equation. So, to balance that we need to put in a minus sign here. So, then that would take care of uh, the additional minus sign. Now, you will see that both sides are equal. So, minus and minus would give me plus k and k would cancel. So, it would be a omega cos omega t minus uh, k x. So, this for us is a very useful relation. So, just to repeat what I have been saying. So, dou y by dou t is simply the particle velocity. It is related to the phase velocity or the wave velocity and the uh, constant um, and the term that relates these two is the gradient of uh, y with respect to x and that is given by uh, this equation. And phase velocity is the speed with which the phase of a wave uh, travels. For instance, let me draw for you a particular waveform something like this. So, let us say that uh, this corresponds to some phase difference with respect to some reference point. The phase velocity basically tells me how fast this particular point moves. Since every point is moving at the same speed in this case, it is also the speed with which the entire wave is moving. On the other hand, your particle velocity corresponds to this small segment, this small segment which is making up and down oscillations. So, the speed with which this up and down oscillation is executed is given by the particle velocity. So, whenever you want the wave to carry say momentum or energy, then physically the important uh, velocity uh, which is relevant in all such cases is the phase velocity of the wave. And just to complete this uh, section, let me quickly rewrite uh, this relation as dou y by dou t which is my particle velocity to be minus d x by d t let me indicate by c the notation that we have been using to indicate um, the phase velocity multiplied by dou y by dou x. So, this is another way of writing the same information. And if you remember what we learnt in the previous module when we looked at the transverse force or the vertical component of the force which was acting downwards. There we said that uh, the vertical component of the force is related to dou y by dou x and here it turns out that dou y by dou t the particle velocity is related to the vertical component of the force which is dou y by uh, dou x.
So, clearly the vertical component of the force on a segment of a string is proportional to particle velocity. So, that is another lesson we can draw from this equation. The quantity which we need to introduce here to quantify how much resistance uh, the medium offers to passage of a wave uh, is what is called the impedance. And impedance I will denote by this quantity z, which would be a ratio of transverse force to transverse velocity. So, when I say transverse, it is transverse to the direction of motion of the wave. So, if your wave is let us say travelling in this direction, positive x direction, transverse force is uh, the one that is perpendicular uh, to it. So, is transverse velocity, velocity in this direction. So, we are going to now uh, use this uh, quantity uh, impedance and this impedance will clearly depend on properties of the uh, medium. To illustrate some of these ideas, uh, let us look at this uh, simple problem of a string which is being forced. So, in other words, string is the forced oscillator. So, I would have something like this, that is my string and uh, since this is a forced oscillator, there is a force that is applied in this direction vertically in oscillating the string up and down. So, the transverse force is F0 e power i omega t. So, that is the force that I apply continuously. And of course, upon application of such a force, the string begins to oscillate and I also assume that there is a tension T in the string. Now, when we do the uh, balance of forces, turns out that this F0 e power i omega t uh, would be equal to minus t times sin theta, where uh, theta would be this angle here. Now, in the spirit of small oscillations, I am going to write this as minus t tan theta and as usual we will substitute it by dou y by dou x. So, this is my uh, equation for balance of uh, forces and since it is basically a waveform that I expect, I am oscillating one end of the string and it is going to generate waveforms, I can assume that the solutions will be the solutions of the wave equation. So, y of x t is a into e power i multiplied to omega t minus k x. So, this represents a wave that is propagating in the positive x direction. And I should uh, remind you that uh, this amplitude a uh, could be a complex number dou y by dou x is equal to minus a. So, remember that a is complex mm, therefore, that is f 0 e power i omega t equal to minus t into minus a k e power i omega t minus k x. Now, I would like to balance these uh, forces at x equal to 0 simply because uh, this point here corresponds to x equal to 0 where the forces are balanced. So, if I do that, I will get the following uh, relation. So, A would be, now I am ready to write down the full solution. So, y of x comma t would be f 0 by i omega into c by t multiplied to e power i omega t minus k x. So, this represents my solution to the problem where I assume that at position x a forcing is applied to the string and so it creates a wave. 
I can also calculate the velocity which will be a function of of course, position and time. So, that would be uh, dou y by dou t. So, I have this expression for the velocity. This can be simplified as follows. So, v would simply be equal to f 0 into c by t i omega and i omega will cancel. So, e power i omega t minus uh, k x and if you remember the definition of uh, impedance as transverse force by uh, transverse velocity, it would tell us that we can identify impedance to be T by C because this is the maximum velocity or the amplitude of the velocity and F0 is of course, the transverse force. This implies that uh, T is equal to rho C square and if I substitute that here, it would give me rho C square by C which is equal to rho C. So, there are these different forms for impedance. So, impedance Z is rho into C. So, rho is the linear density and C is the uh, wave velocity or the phase velocity. So, so, we have now simpler relations that relate impedance to properties of the medium and clearly impedance itself is a property of medium. So, it is not surprising that it is related to uh, rho and uh, C. So, now at this point what we have is we have seen the wave equation, we have solved the wave equation we have obtained different possible solutions for the wave equations and we also defined at least two different possible velocities that are associated with the wave and we also defined the impedance. To remind you again impedance is simply the sort of resistance that the medium offers to the passage of the wave. Now, in the next uh, few modules, we will use all these machinery that we have learnt in the last, in this module and the previous one to look at how uh, waves behave when they go from one medium to another medium. So, we will look at all these problems in the subsequent modules. Mm -hmm.